review. All right, guys, we're going to start distributive property. It is a mostly middle school um, kind of operation that we learn in math class. And it is something that for the first two weeks of school is going to be what makes a question complicated. OK, this is one little piece of questions we're going to see in the future. And so we really want to make sure that we know how to do distributive property correctly. For the most part, we hopefully recall these nice arrows distributing that front number to the other numbers inside the parentheses. Distributive property, and I think we should really write this at the top, is a multiplication property, okay? It's all about multiplying. So yesterday we worked on combining like terms. That's all about addition. Distributing is all about multiplying. Sometimes I see students who go to distribute the six onto the two, and instead of six times two, they end up with six plus two, and that is an incorrect answer. So multiplying is what we're up to here. Whenever we start with two things in the middle, distributing is making sure that this outside number gets multiplied one at a time by everything on the inside. And that's what these arrows help remind us to do. I'm pretty picky about the arrows. I think that if you draw your arrows correctly, it will help you. If you draw your arrows incorrectly, it's actually going to make things worse. Okay, so here's an example of bad arrows on the top. Okay, a lot of times I see students, maybe the question looks something like this. Okay, and students draw an arrow that looks like this. That is a bad example of what to do. Malo. We do not like to distribute with this type of arrow on top. That makes it look like the 5 times the x and then the, five, the x times the 1. We want to make sure to draw our arrows like this. The 6 to the x and then pick up your pencil and start over and draw an arrow from the 6 to the 2. Okay. I know you got to pick up your pencil for like a half second there, but don't let that be the reason that you get the question wrong. For this first one, 6 times the x is going to be 6x. Nice job. Multiplying a number times a variable is something that students can kind of stress about when they're first back from summer, but it is not really as, as difficult as it sounds. If you want to multiply a number times a letter, you just put them next to each other and that's it, right? So six times x is just six x. You just stack them next to each other, no big deal. Six times two is going to be 12. Now we are going to be doing some multiplying today. You can look on the page. You can see that we even have some fractions. We even have some negative numbers. And so when it comes to multiplying and we use a calculator, of course, Desmos is what we're going to want to take advantage of. So I'm going to have Desmos open in another tab and be ready to use that when I need it. All right, let's get into our very first question. Number one. Number one, we know that distribution is needed whenever we see parentheses and a number in front of those parentheses. So this is kind of our clue, this is our key. And so, okay, I'm thinking, nice. I'm gonna need to use the distributive property, which is a multiplication property. I'm gonna want to draw arrows from the three out front to the first number, and then I'm gonna go back and draw a new arrow from the three to the six making sure that we got three to the x and three to the six is an important part of making sure we're nice and organized and we're using multiplication multiplying a number times a letter three times x is not as hard as it sounds what would it be three x nice job and then multiplying a number times a number well Numbers times numbers, that is what calcul calculators do best. We can go to Desmos and we can type three times six. Now talking about how to use Desmos, there is a keyboard on the screen here that we can use to do this. We can do three times six and it will tell us the answer is 18. 
There's also a keyboard shortcut in order to do multiplication. On your keyboard, if you look at the eight key, the eight key has a star on it, and that star counts as multiplication for Desmos. So I can press three, shift eight, and you can see that it made a multiplication sign, and then a six. In algebra, we will always use the dot or parentheses for multiplication. We will never use the X to mean multiplication because we already have X's for variables. So those X multiply signs are gone and they're replaced with a dot. Anyways, we have 18 as our second term after distributing. And we talked about this yesterday. It's one of the only things we haven't reviewed during the short warm up that we had today. What do we need in order to kind of space these out? We need to go back and make sure we have a plus that is keeping our terms separate. Sometimes you'll need to add in a plus there, but not every time. If you already have a plus or if you already have a minus, you're good to go. Don't put too much in there. Now, moving on quickly. Number two is a question that is iconic when it comes to Algebra 1, okay? This is a classic question to keep you on your toes. I see that we have parentheses, but I see that out front, all we have is a negative sign. And this is a classic attempt for me to ask you, what is it really if there's just a negative sign out front? And of course, uh, you know, a really, really big concept in middle school is that concept of the invisible one that is in front of any letter, or an invisible one that is hiding behind these negative signs. And so, if I was you, I would certainly put a one, try to sneak it in there in between the parentheses and the negative sign, because we're not just gonna distribute a negative, you're gonna think about it like multiplying by negative one. I'm gonna draw my arrows. And I like number two a lot because I was telling you guys yesterday, negative signs are the difference of an entire letter grade in algebra one. If you are a person who's really, really good at negatives, your grade's gonna go up a whole letter grade. Maybe you think you're a B student. If you get these negatives right, you're gonna turn into an A student. It's crazy. The negatives are super, super important. So working with these very first multiplications, I've got a negative one and a negative two X. How do I multiply a negative one times a negative two? Well, you can use Desmos. Negative one, my shortcut is shift eight. And when I multiply those together, I'm gonna get negative, or sorry, positive two. Caught me making a mistake there. Positive two. Does that two need any letters? Yeah. Yes, that one's gonna need an X. Does anybody remember the trick to remembering about positives and negatives when it comes to multiplying? If you have two positives, and you multiply together, you're gonna get a positive. Let's make a little chart down here. I'm gonna go quickly. This is a sign multiplication. So if we multiply two positives together, we are gonna get a positive answer. If we multiply two negatives together, which is what we just did, we just did negative one times negative two, what type of answer did we get? Also positive again. And so when do we get negative signs through multiplication? One negative one positive. Right, when you have two different signs. So if you have one negative and one positive, you're gonna end up with a negative number. Nice job. Again, those are the negative rules for multiplication. We might be talking all the way back in 
fifth grade or sixth grade or seventh grade, but they're important, okay? The good news is we have Desmos, so when in doubt, just check it out in Desmos. Okay, we're going back. We did our first thing. Negative one times negative two makes positive two. What is negative one times positive four? Let's try it out. Negative one, shift eight, positive four. It is negative four. Nice job. When I write that negative four, am I gonna need to put a plus in the middle here? No, I'm not. They're already nice and separated. We're already feeling pretty good. All right. For number three, we're gonna work on distributing this negative six. And I'm noticing for number three that we have negative, negative, negative. So we have a lot of negatives to work with. Let's take our time. I'm gonna distribute this negative six to the th negative three X and also to the negative two. Has anybody solved this already? What is negative six times negative three? You guys are correct. Positive 18, I'm impressed, nice job. Negative six, shift eight, negative three is positive 18. I like that as well. We're gonna need to put an X on there. And then negative six times negative two. You guys are correct. It is gonna be a positive 12. I will need a plus in order to keep these terms split up and separated um, if you make any hall pass. I appreciate it if you made it to Miss Johnson as well. Uh, oh, I gotcha. You can just make it to me then. Working on number four, okay? This is definitely maybe our hardest question of the year. We have fractions. We're not gonna use a whole lot of fractions in Algebra 1, but we will certainly be using some fractions in Algebra 1. I got you, no big deal, we gotta sort it out. So when I go to distribute this, I wanna be careful of two things. First of all, I know that it's a fraction, and second of all, I know that it's a negative number. I wanna get this typed in perfectly to Desmos, and here is the strategy for typing in Desmos. I would really, really, really recommend that you lock in here if you're starting to kind of zone out on me or maybe you feel like you're the master of distribution. Check this out. When you're typing fractions in Desmos, always press the fraction button first. And what is the key to getting fractions on Desmos? There's not really a button here. What is the button we press to get a fraction on Desmos? Anybody know? If we press the divide button, the divide button is gonna make this fraction for us. So you can see I press divide, and now it's gonna give me a fraction where I can type in the top or the bottom. So I can type negative divide one on top of three. And that is the best way for me to get a fraction. Now, I'll give you an even better way to do it. If you see on your keyboard the question mark, the question mark key without the shift is going to give you a fraction as well. So if you try pressing the question mark key with no shift, that is going to give you a fraction. So I'm going with negative question mark button one on top of three, shift eight. Now, if you see what I've done here, it's tough on the video, but when I did negative one third times, my times ended up in the fraction. So you gotta be, Desmos is really nice, but you gotta always check out what you're typing in and make sure it looks good. I'm gonna click on the side to make sure that my times goes next to the fraction. Negative one third times six, I'm getting the answer negative two. So I'm gonna put a negative two here. Does that two need any letters on it? Yeah, yeah it should need an X. And I'll give you guys a chance. Does somebody else want to solve negative one third times negative nine? Negative three. So we got an answer of negative three. If I type negative question mark one on top of three, I go to the side times 
negative 9, I'm going to get positive 3 as the answer because two negatives makes a positive. So there is my answer. And as, as crazy as this question was, we just use Desmos, okay? You have a supercomputer right there for you. Take advantage of that. Just type these things in Desmos and type them carefully. Any questions about getting fractions in Desmos? We got that question mark key. That's the way to do it. Okay. Going on, we have one question left and then we're done with notes for the day. We've gone over distribution. That's all there is to it. When we do distribution, we have a three-parter here. If you notice, inside of the parentheses, we have three terms. But that's okay. It's really not that big of a deal. We just have to make sure that the number out front, which is a negative four, and I don't want to forget that negative, gets multiplied by all things. Negative four times the first part, which I called A, negative four times the second part, which I called B, and negative four times the third part, which I called C. So we gotta take that negative four and get it to all three pieces. Now, we still have Desmos. I'll leave this one up to you guys. What would the first term be after I did distribution? Negative eight, eight. Very good job, negative eight X. That's because negative times positive is gonna make negative, four times two is eight, and we have the X as our variable. Awesome, let's move on to B. Don't forget that B is a negative seven, not just a plain seven, it's a negative seven. Anybody have the term for the middle? Plus you are correct, nice job. Plus 28, does that 28 need a variable on it? This one actually does need to bring down that Y because it's a negative seven Y. So we're gonna keep those letters with us the whole time as we go down. And let's look at this last one. Negative four times positive eight Z. Does anybody know what that would be for our final term? Negative 32 is correct. And does that need a letter on it? That needs a Z. And this is why I like to put kind of a slash through my Z because my twos look a lot like my Zs. And so when it says 32 Z, Sometimes it looks like 322, so I like to put a little slash through my Z's. It makes them kind of ugly, but hopefully it's a little clearer. All right, distributive property. It is not a brand new thing. Hopefully it's ringing a couple of bells. Use Desmos, go slowly, and don't forget those negative signs, okay? Super, super important. Nice job.